All right, this is the tutorial on how to use the auto terrain texture. Right here, I've the only thing I've done is extracted this into its own folder, and I've also made it a I've made a tutorial folder for the actual project. This is just a blueprint module, uh, a blueprint third person module. To install it, all you have to do is create a plugins folder. Then go to where you extracted the actual plugin. We're gonna cut this out. Gonna plug we're gonna paste it into your plugins folder. And from there you can just start the project. Okay, once we have the project open, to be able to see the actual contents for the plugin, you have to click inside the content browser, the view options, and enable plugin content. From here, you should be able to scroll down to the auto terrain texture or content, and you can see everything that we have in here. So, all of these are all the meshes. You have your disposition maps for the flow map and things like that you have the data for the landscape grass types you have the test map which I'm going to open I can move up here so you have the rocks the terrain and everything like that you also have the material functions and you have the main material for the actual terrain here so you have the main to you have the main material which by itself doesn't do anything at all. It just blends everything together. Um, this is for you to look through if you want to see how everything is put together, how everything is layered. For the dynamic texturing and the manual textures that you can put in there, as well as calculating the mass for the grass and the forest grass types. And anytime you want to, you can come in here and change these to whatever custom grass types and forest types that you actually want to populate your map with. If we go over to the instance, inside the instance, we have all the layers where we can control pretty much everything we want to for all the different layers. You can come in here and change your texture. You can desaturate the incoming material. You can change the diffuse strength, which is just brighten the color or make it stronger. You can change the material brightness. You can tile the texture, and you can actually add your own custom tint to it, which helps especially if you have, if you desaturate your incoming, so that way you just have a flat grayscale albedo map. You can also scale your normal map and change your intensity and the normal scale as well as well as change your PBR material and roughness values as well as add a uh, an RMA which is the roughness um, the roughness metal and ambient occlusion map if you have those combined together I use Quixel for some of my textures so they come like that so I added that in here or, um, automatically to be able to handle those type of maps um, you have your decomposition map, which is pretty much those flow maps and things like that, where you can use that to mask in rocks or something like that for your, the, your terrain. I'm actually using it for my walking path texture, so it's just pretty much a dirt path anywhere I put that to be able to mask that across the whole terrain. And you can control the contrast and the fall off and the power of it with these parameters. You can also specify your beach height and your snow height. 
these are set for default for everything in the actual scene so outside of changing these the only thing you might have to change is snow height because i think i cranked that pretty high so you don't have to see it on a unless you actually necessarily need that snow um and here you can change the fall offs of the cliff the grass and the rock slopes and let's see i think that's it about that one pretty much to make your own custom one you can go into the rpg terrain and create your own custom instance and you can go in and change that per map per landscape and things like that and put out put your own textures to configure that however you want um i thought of that we have the rpg sky i'm actually going to let me go back to the original level I go to the default level don't say if if i bring in the terrain I'm just going to pick anyone. I guess this works. I'm bringing this in as is. Import. All right, so with this terrain here, if I can get my camera to move, I'm going to add the RPG sky. Well, actually, let me delete everything else first. That we don't need so let's see get rid of that get rid of the light source and get rid of the sky spear and then we can drop in the RPG sky we're going to center that to the zero axis so now everything should be like when I actually add the terrain here the terrain material so let's see add landscape we're going to go to map, no, materials, and I'm going to add the old material instance. So right now, as we can see, we have our beach line going into our mountain. So let me move the terrain up so it can be adjusted as I need it for the water level. And that's too far. So I'm just going to do it like right there. If I want, I can control the the offset of the beach so it's not as high and weird looking on the actual rock over there. So it's a little bit better here, but it can be better. So as you can see, we have the rock. I have my old disposition map here, so it's not exactly getting the correct. flow map for this actual terrain and if we get really close we can see that we don't have any grass or anything growing on the actual terrain this is actually an issue with the landscape unless you actually go in here and trigger this landscape material you're not going to get anything out so if I can go in here open here and just toggle one of these boxes on and off that'll actually force it to recompile and start populating our terrain so now if I hit play I'm over in the water and I think if I fall into this water I think I have a death zone oh I actually don't have a death zone good so instead of walking all the way over here let's do this I'm just gonna fall all the way over here and I'm going to put myself right here current load of position so as you can see we have the grass we have everything of course we got because of the sharp points and things like that we have grass floating and things like that you can actually change the grass type to not do that or for or you can actually get you know flatter grass that's not as spread out to actually get a better effect for that um, let's see we have our forest area right here that doesn't really have much in it 
So I'm going to change this right now. I'm actually going to add some trees and rocks to this. Even though you can go in and paint your own, I'm just going to add this here for speed's sake. Just get a rock. Let's not do 400. Just trying to find a big rock. There we go. That's pretty big. There you go. And that's too many. Say 10 for this. It's an overabundance of trees. Zero point one. I'm going to change the fall off for the trees so I can see them further out. All right, so that's 100,000. And they're slowly taking over the entire environment. I don't have much grass in this island. And I have a lot of rocks. But this is just me playing around. I don't have any solid numbers for this since I've not really used this area much. Inside the RPG sky, if we look in here, we also have changes for the skylight and things like that. and. This skylight is pretty dark. I actually think I'm controlling the skylight via data parameter. So if you want to come and change how how and when the skylight gets bright and dark, you can come in here and change this data set. But as far as installing and everything like that, that should be able to get you up and started. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Leave me a message on YouTube or Facebook or whatever. Thank you. Have a nice day.